Welcome to Girl X Nights, the Girl X Podcast live show. I'm Randy. I'm Melanie. And I'm Jesse. Tonight, what the flux? Yeah. <laughs> How many people do you think have made that joke? I'm the, sure if we did. <laughs> the flux capacitor is f- fluxing. <laughs> fluxing on them. <laughs> right, right. Tonight we flux on you. Flux face. <laughs> Savannah likes Melanie's icon. Thank you. Uh, but first, hold on, everybody. How, how are you two doing here? I'm, I'm doing okay. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. I'm ready for this week to be over, though. I feel like mm-hmm. I say that a lot. Maybe I don't. I don't know. But I definitely feel it this week. Mm-hmm. Fluxing on them. Ho- is, that a, is that an expression? What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, that's a weird flux. <laughs> oh, there we go. Finally. Better. Yeah, so tonight we're going to talk about... I feel like I just said yeah so loud, it clipped in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded fine to me, but... Man. I don't know. Yeah, me too. Uh, it, didn't, uh, it didn't echo either. It didn't create an echo. So you've got better headphones than me. Wow. Savannah hopes this fluxing week will be over soon. It will be. Um, so yeah, so tonight we're going to talk about Doctor Who, because there's a new Doctor Who airing, and... That's what we do. That's yeah. Doctor Who is the is like three of the four cor- cornerstones of this foundation of this podcast. Mm-hmm. And to air is human. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was about to say I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. You'll be able to tell, but you know what? I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. But listen to Jesse. You'll be able to. Tell. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about Doctor Who Flux episode. Why is it Flux? Is that just... I That's mean, the name of like the six-episode six, arc. The right. arc has a name, the I guess. The series. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Doctor Who Season 13, Episode 1, Flux, The Halloween Apocalypse, Trick or Treat, dun-dun-dun. With the um, least amount of trick-or-treating and the least amount of Halloween possible. Mm-hmm. It's so... Oh, it's, it was so lazy. surface. Yeah, it was like, so it was, surface. It was less referential than a Christmas special. Mm-hmm. Which uh, I don't need them to hit me over the head with it, but like, I, come on, at least try. It actually felt kind of Christmassy to me. Like the guy, like volunteering at several places or whatever, and right, and the mini like ornament house, you know. Yeah. <sighs> There's so oh, many wow. things. It's gonna be so hard not to just dive into it. Um. Uh, and, but we can get to it pretty quick because I actually haven't don't have much to say for like what we've been watching. I just realized that like last weekend, Halloween weekend, uh, last weekend at the time of the live stream, audio listeners in the future. Sorry. Um. Do the Brits go trick or treating? I know they they know. invented it. Maybe. <laughs> Did they? Uh, nope. Because they, they're not big on it. The, well, nope. they invented Sam Hain. <laughs> Nobody celebrates it as much as we do. Right. I know that. I guess Everybody it's... thinks it's weird that we celebrate Halloween so much, but I'm like, uh, why does the rest of the world not? Because it's the best holiday ever. We don't celebrate it enough. Yeah, exactly. So, if you don't celebrate it at all, I don't even want to know you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and over there, they're like, those colonists are getting rowdy again. <laughs> Right. With their with their trick or treating candy and their eggs, <laughs> never mind. I was think making weird connections with gun violence. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! What a Hello, uh, I was, trick or I was, trick or treat. We're here for your guns. I, I was thinking more. <laughs> it must be the pumpkins because I think didn't they use turnips and they look like actual like. Yes. Scary, messed up heads. And yeah. we use pumpkins, which makes it funner and more gimme candy like. I don't know. <laughs> more gimme <give> candy like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, I'm glad that's Savannah's comment. I went um, to a 10. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, well, anyway, I was talking to Melanie last, uh, about last weekend. She was over. We hung mm-hmm. out. Halloween and all that. We didn't go anywhere, though, because... Who's got money for gas? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, we didn't go anywhere. We just kind of stayed in. I was like, what movie did we watch? 
And it occurred to me, we didn't watch any movies. We didn't watch any horror movies. It was Halloween. Halloween weekend. Yeah. Um, but we did watch some What We Do in the Shadows. We finished uh, the most recent season. Is it season three? Yeah. We finished season three. Mm-hmm. And we're not going to talk about spoilers, but there are, it's, there are actually like major spoilers that you could get into. Typically, it's not the kind of show that has big spoilers. Mm-hmm. Oh, Savannah watched The Shining last weekend. The, the Stanley Kubrick Shining, I'm assuming. Um, is, it, is there another one? Well, there's like a made-for-TV miniseries, right? Right. With right. Rob. Oh, Lowe. oh, it does yeah. It hardly counts, but... Yeah, I, I don't. That doesn't count. <laughs> um, the Shining is great. It's maybe my favorite horror movie. Um, but yeah, What We Do in the Shadows, season three, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, if if you haven't ever jumped on board, don't Google search it now. Yeah, no kidding. Be spoilers. Oh yeah, sure. Um, I'm lucky. Also, I don't, uh, sorry, I was gonna say I'm lucky. I don't really search the internet because, they, yeah, it, it totally on. could have been spoiled for me, but it wasn't. Luckily. Uh, I think Savannah also at tor- at the be- before the season started mm. gave us fake news because. Mm-hmm. I kept thinking that we heard that one of the actors was leaving Uh and I thought it was, um, what's his name that plays Laszlo. Mm -hmm. So all season I'm waiting for them for Laszlo to leave. Mm -hmm. But the season also coincidentally does this funny thing where, especially once it ramps up towards the end, where it kind of misleads you into thinking anyone's leaving at any certain time. And by the end, before we got to the end of the season, I'm like, everyone's just going to leave. Everyone's leaving. (laughs) <laughs> They're setting up these weird plot threads, <laughs> making you think, oh, this person is going to leave. No, this person is going to leave. Uh, Savannah gave me fake news, so I thought Laszlo was going to leave. And uh, and I won't get into spoilers, but that's super ironic given how it does end. So, um, yeah, they probably did it on purpose. I tried to Google, sir. I tried to find the article that... Because I had, it wasn't just, I wasn't just going on Savannah's news. What do you think? You're Paul? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Randy is out of 10 tonight. <laughs> um, uh, you're right. <laughs> we need to go to 11. <laughs> there we go. Let's turn this up. My neighbor's like, what the f-? Oh. <laughs> what, wow. Is the, where's the flux there? That might be the first time I slipped up on a stream. Yeah, you're usually real careful. Well, I mean, if it's just it is a little f bomb and not something that's going to get me canceled, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah. All right. Anyway, what so I watch? did watch Halloween stuff, <laughs> uh, but it was like like we were passing out uh, candy to trick or treaters, and uh, it was like. Well, let's see what we got, you know. So I fire up uh, HBO Max and they have their uh, Halloween collection thing, you know. So you could just like flip through. And they had like Halloween specials. So I fired up the Smurfs Halloween special because I was like, that's a thing. So I did. And like, it's all about lazy Smurf getting turned into a red Smurf because he fell asleep while uh, Mother Nature was running around changing the leaves from green to red and brown. So red Smurf. And he's like, I can't go back to Smurf Village looking like this. And I was like, whoa, with the racial undertones here. Yeah. He would not be accepted as a red Smurf in his own village. Is this new or is this a classic? This is a, no, it was a classic Smurf episode. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, they just had like like all the Halloween episodes. So like right next to the Smurf special was like the Friends Halloween special or whatever. Okay. So, but I had to watch it because I was like, I yeah. I need to know what what they would do with Halloween in the Smurf Village because that doesn't even seem very Smurfy. But yeah, it was it was fascinating. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I don't, I don't, that doesn't sound familiar to me. I used to watch Smurfs all the time. Yeah. But I don't I remember it. Somehow always, also always missed Charlie Brown Halloween thing. Like the whole great pumpkin thing. People would oh, always yeah. reference that. And I'm like, hh. what's this? What's this? You never saw the great pumpkin. Huh? No, I don't think Weird. I did either. 
actually. That was kind of the big one, that one. And, yeah. and then Christmas, everybody knew the Christmas one right. too, right? Yeah. Like that's the Charlie Brown dance is on that one. I, I didn't watch that get the tree, with the, you didn't watch the dying the tree. One? Never seen either one of them. How have you never seen the Christmas? See, that's the thing though. The Christmas one was on, yeah, every year. I, <sighs> I was watching it. Star Wars. I mean, like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Weird, weird. <laughs> I don't know. That needs to be our Christmas shirt. <laughs> the Grolix <laughs> Christmas shirt has to have something to do with Star Wars. I know that's a protected IP, but like, I don't know. Here Maybe just <laughs> something. Have have a Christmas in a faraway galaxy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Just twist it. Yeah, it's a good idea, actually. Like so, that. like, that was the main thing that I watched, and then. um I listened to Big Finish, which is a really big surprise, I know, uh, since Doctor Who is our theme tonight. Um, I listened to Stranded 2, which is the second box set of an eighth Doctor run where his TARDIS is stranded in the year 2020, I think it's 2020. So it's pre-pandemic in in the uh, <laughs> in the box set. I wonder if they're going to... like. I wonder if they're going to address that because that's where he's stranded is in the year 2020. Hmm. I think there's just like a, a mandate. They're like, he can never go back to 2020. So <laughs> right. not do it. First of all, he's stranded there. And so like the TARDIS doesn't work or like anything. Worst, really, it's like, yeah. Sorry, doc. That's the worst, worst place to get, st- worst time and place to get. Stranded. And, and it like, it's, it gets real meta because um, the last episode of this box set was during the lockdown part of 2020 so like they were that was the first one where they were literally um recording in their own houses totally stranded from each other like not in the big finish studios so kind of crazy but i'm I'm really enjoying it like a lot of people were bagging on the first box set because it it's it is a departure it's different but you know like i like the third doctor and he's stranded on earth so this is like that uh where like you don't see the eight doctor get tetchy all that much like he's pretty much fascinated by everything since day one right Mm -hmm. like he has his moments but when he's just baseline eighth doctor he's kind of just like oh this is fun let's go look at this and you know like he's just kind of a joke he's kind of a jovial doctor he's kind of mellow um and it's funny you you make him stranded and you get a tetchy eighth doctor and i was like man this is very three and there's a lot of third doctor elements that come into play in this box set like he eventually gets the tardis to work well enough that he can travel in time but not space so his start his tardis stays put but he can go back in time Mm -hmm. so that's kind of fun interesting interesting and the curator is involved in these like the, this is one of those box sets where they introduce the great curator. So Tom Baker is there and, and mm-hmm. pretend, you know, like doing his best curator. Maybe I'm the doctor, but maybe I'm not. And he mm-hmm. even like almost offers this kid a, a jelly baby. But the, this kid is like, I don't like sweets. And he's like, <laughs> would you like a, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I don't know why I would ask. And I was like, you, <laughs> it's so good. It's so you. Good. yeah. Man. No, I really, I'm really enjoying the Stranded series, even even if people are. Have they come out with a like lukewarm cur- curator on it. audio drum? Nope, yet? they've just been like uh, peppering him into the like. This is perfect okay. because that's where he is in the timeline. Is he is in kind of modern London doing his mm-hmm. great curator thing in the under gallery of the of the tower? So, man, what a, that was such a good idea, was, and they. Uh, they travel back um, because there's like some unit folks. I, I don't know how much Eighth Doctor stuff you know, but he's got a flat on Baker Street. And uh, okay. so when they show up in 2020, it's been like decades since he's been to the flat. So someone else took over it because they thought he was dead. And uh, they sublet it and turned it into apartments. And so like he shows up and he's like, no, this is mine. And so now he has to run a house. Not only is he stranded, but he has to be a (laughs) landlord too. It's so great. I love it. And there's like retired unit people there. So at one point they travel back in time and uh, 
they've got uh, John Colshaw does the voice of the brig, and he's spot on. He's as he's almost as good as having a left bridge. You know, like he's n no one replaces the original, but he's so good. He sounds just like him. Cool. So, yeah, I recommend it. Big finish, still winning. Awesome sauce. I hear they love stories, or they, they do. They know, yeah, they love stories. Yes, we love stories. <laughs> It's, it's a, a long story. It's a long story. Yes, good, good. Yeah, <laughs> I almost said it earlier when you were talking about commercials. I was like, was it a long story? <laughs> Nobody, nobody's gonna know what we're talking. about. <laughs> no, not unless you watch things on the CW app, like five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you know, it's been with us forever. Yeah. What was that show even for? That show probably doesn't even... It's still it was, it wasn't even on the CW. It was on CW Seed, but they were like advertising it on the CW app. <sighs> CW yeah. Seed even exists still? I don't oh, no. think so. I doubt it. I think it's all just like merge, and then they sold it all to HBO, right? <laughs> like it's all just <laughs> in HBO now. I bet you can watch that show on HBO Max. That reminds me. I didn't... I heard the Swamp Thing live, and maybe I'm wrong. We're not doing normal news. We have some Doctor Who news we'll, we mm -hmm. might get to, but uh, I heard. Did they pull Swamp Thing and give it to somebody else? Oh, no, never mind. They're going to do. I, I heard Swamp Thing was going to finally get a second season, but I think it's going to get a second season in comic book form which is a weird thing to do oh Ooh. like they continued smallville in comic book form and they yeah oh wait no no they're just going to continue the current miniseries that was supposed to be a 10 issue miniseries that's getting a second season okay i've seen season and swamp thing and season's not normally associated with the comic books themselves so right weird okay. and it shouldn't be because it's confusing yeah that is confusing I never, we never finished watching that Swamp Thing TV show. That's oh, really? It was that bad. You you just stopped. It was just dis kind of disappointing because it was right. Yeah. Well, yeah. and then they sabotaged themselves by being like, "Yeah, it's canceled before it even started." So mm -hmm. it was kind of bad, and then combined with the fact that we know it's not going to go anywhere. Man, what a way to like sabotage your own show. Yeah. It had some cool thing. A, a rated R Swamp Thing could be a, like live action Swamp Thing with decent effects. And this had some pretty cool effects. Could be amazing if its producers and writers understood what makes Swamp Thing amazing. And I don't I, think they did. I think it would be better to do an animated Swamp Thing, actually. But right, right. It's but, pretty, pretty hard to CG up some like growing and then dying and then growing and then dying, you know, stuff. But I don't know, man. I don't know. They, I feel like their plant shapes are organic, but I feel like they're pretty good at CGIing that stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I'm not saying that they couldn't do it, but it'd be too expensive to do it well, is what I'm th thinking. You know what I mean? It swamps, Swampy's worth the money. <laughs> I want to see <laughs> blue. Was it my blue heaven? Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to see blue that swampy. That would be live great. action, which would would actually just be completely CG. So <laughs> yeah. Still. And then the one where he goes to the planet and gets like yes. assaulted by the planet. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so weird. That I, I don't think you could do that. That'd be on filmable. I don't know how you'd even like interpret what's going on in there. Make make nine inch nail sounds. You're gonna need <laughs> yes. the, you're gonna need the Legion people on that one. <laughs> yeah. It, right. All right. Okay. Well, let's talk about actual Doctor Who. Let's 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 get into this. Okay. Um, let's talk about the the show that we watched, the new one. It, it aired on Halloween. Um. So is it back regular? Is it weekly now? I think so. I think, I think it's like weeks. six weeks. Is that right? Yeah, it's going to come and go. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be over before we know it. Um, but it's two parts, right? Like, this is just the first half of what they're going to do for season six. It's not like season I, or whatever no, season I, we're I on. Think it, 
I think it got changed. I think this is this is the this, this is six it. episodes is the the big like series long arc that they that he wanted to do that Chimney right. wanted to do. I think it was longer and it got shortened probably because of COVID because it would otherwise would have been filming during a chunk of that. Oh, that does not bode well. No, no. Um, but the, the, as far as I know, they're still supposed to come back for. A two, three, a co- some specials. Specials, right? So mm-hmm. they got. So we're gonna have six episodes of Flux, and then Jody will be back for some more specials, kind of like how Tenant went out, right? Right. Oh, God, I hope it's better than the last. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. RTD. It wasn't always perfect. All right. R- right, um, right. We had we had the Dobby Doctor at one point. Remember that was a thing. Oh, oh mm-hmm. yeah. I had yeah. forgotten about that till that re- that last rewatch. That's real bad. Yeah. He's the the day is saved because everyone thinks the doctor and they they pray to him. He, <laughs> they made a, him Dr. Jesus. Such a day, Dr. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Such a day is ex machina is awful. It wasn't even like magic. It was like faith and magic. Yeah. Which is less real. Which is like the magic. least Doctor <laughs> Who thing ever, too. You know, it really like is. it's like that that's the kind of thing that the doctor goes to a planet to be like Ghosts are real. Here's science. Yeah. RTD, it's something about, like, if I were to fault him for, like, kind of some of the worst of his time period, it's any time he felt like he was trying to do a big, because those all came, like, the Dobby Doctor was, like, a big end of the season, like, Mm two-episode deal, and the Master was involved. Right. Mm -hmm. Combine those things, and it's, like, crap city every time i don't i don't right i don't understand in fact we should not let them use the master because anytime they bring the master in it becomes crap city chibnall's got the same problem the the best thing the best treatment of the master since we i mean like we've got two gems out of this deal and that was derek jacoby because his war master is incredible and it's all on big finish go there but like that master is so capable like I, I, fin- I finished the anti, uh, was it the anti Genesis uh, box set where he basically tries to take over Davros's thing and, and win the time war. And uh-huh. he does like spoilers. That's what happens. The master wins. This master is so capable that he got everything he ever wanted and basically destroyed the universe because of it. Cool. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And so it's like, you know, it's, it's like, the total opposite of then what he becomes when he regenerates (laughs) like he regenerates into the least capable master in john sims was he the one that yeah he yeah he's in the show and he regenerates into he's Mm -hmm. yeah he's excellent he's excellent until he realizes he's the master and turns and regenerates (laughs) right right. yeah Uh, oh man but that moment was so good like then then we got the two episodes after that we got the Saxon master and we're like, what? <laughs> I was you know, so excited for a minute. And the, what's this? Is it Sasha? Uh, De, Dewan? What's, what's his name? The current master or the, Oh yeah. Master? I don't even know. I don't even know. Um, and he's like a callback to Sims. I don't know why though. You I know, really like, liked his character until he revealed that he was the master and then he <laughs> made <me> tunes. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. first, like episode where he's like just pretending to be a guy yeah uh he's interesting mm-hmm. and if you watch it knowing that he's the master there's some interesting little like like there's a little extra there like he's a good actor mm-hmm. um and there are moments of his master that i enjoy but man they have him play it so looney tunes that mm-hmm. i i kind of hate him most of the time <laughs> Well, that's what I'm. I imagine he's coming back, isn't he? I mean, like the shrinking houses, and I mean, like I, I know we're gonna get into it, but like, right, uh, right. all I can think is tissue uh, compression manipulator. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's weird specifically that it was. I mean, I guess that that's also dog person tech, but uh, <sighs> it's weird. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Okay, so. Uh, this the Doctor Who th- season thirteen episode one. I'm so like, I didn't hate it, but it's one of those things where like it doesn't feel. I don't feel like I can 
definitively say, yeah, that, that was crap or it was good because it's not a complete thing. It's clear. Right. It was a mess. It was a yes. mess. And there's a lot of elements going on, but it's no, but I know it's setting up this big arc. So it's hard to judge it on its own. I can definitely nitpick a bunch of little stuff that I hated though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't hate, but I w- did not like. So, <laughs> yeah. I uh, I when I was seeing stills like leading up to this thing, and we saw the dog face person. I'm thinking kind of Chewbacca, right? And I'm thinking, okay, well, that's an interesting design for an alien. I don't love it, but I'm not gonna hate it yet. I do hate it. You hate it? I hate it. It's stupid. It's the dumbest. It's it's. Well, we were talking before that there's that Chibnall does some dumb Doctor Who. This is the guy that that gave us Broadchurch. I don't know how. I know. I know. I don't know how because his Doctor Who stuff talks down to kids. It's dumb. It's bad. Like like the thing with the with this dog person. I'm ju- I'm just jumping into spoilers here. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> the thing with this dog person is that they're loyal to mankind. So loyal that their job is to come here and and save their one life person bond thing how like their man's work? best friend that is so dumb how does that mm-hmm. how does that magic work by the way they're genetically bonded or whatever and it's not just like to to mankind they have to come and save humans if something goes wrong which by the way humans don't know about them uh it's each one of them is bound to each one human so like how what how does that yeah. work how yeah. do they know? Are they watching us all the time? That's creepy. They're creepy stalker stalker dogs. <laughs> Are they like that's that's mine. I want that one. Yeah. Um, and then also, how stupid of a plan is it to like? Oh, we need to quickly evacuate all the humans. Let's send one spaceship for every human on Earth. Uh huh. What? Yeah, like they won't notice that. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to do it and they'll be fine with it. And if they're not, whatever. And uh, if you have the technology to shrink things, why not just go zap your person down tiny, like tractor or not tractor beam? What do you call it? Uh, whatever. Beam them up and then, uh, you know, talk to them about it when you're gone. Uh, I, I actually had less problem w- with them. I mean, the one on one thing is one-to-one thing is really weird but i assumed they were like a future race that has time traveled to take care of us because we i'm assuming in the future that my brain just decides to make up stories to make it sense of it we love dogs we made them their own planet at some point in time and so they they're loyal to us you know that's my what i thought in my head i can explain that away but but why they're so inefficient that doesn't make any sense to me why have they never come before? <laughs> it's well, they're life bonded to these guys, but like wars happen, and like man, I really should get to Earth and save my homie in Afghanistan right now. Right? We've yeah. never heard of the dog man, best <laughs> right. friend thing until now. Which I mean, like I can forgive that because it's Doctor Who, and we learn new things all the time. But so dumb. And this this reeks of hey hey everybody remember how this is a kids show here we are it's it's the design it's that certain like and I forgive it when Doctor Who does it sometimes it's like where they inject it it's it is that it's the Ewoks of Doctor Who right. right and they do that every so often they inject a character that they know is cute and it's kind of stupid but they're like it's cute people will love it. And this one, I can forgive the cute look because it is cute. It's a big, it's weird, but also like it's a cute dog face, but a hu- but like human sized body with a big dog head, like fine. But then to give it an equally cute story and, and reason for, to exist, too much, too much. But also to make them like super warrior like, uh, almost, almost like Santarans. Mm hmm. Ooh, yeah. I didn't get that vibe. Yeah, uh, me too. Especially when he first showed showed up mm-hmm. at the house. What at the very beginning? He's killing. He's trying to kill. He hasn't the doctor. 
And I, at first, didn't even make that connection because yeah. it's such a mess. <laughs> He's James Bond villaining them. He's the same. Say. It's the same character. And then it's like, and that ties into the mess of like, really, the doctor just lies to Yaz. And yeah, the doctor lies, but I don't know why, but it bothers me more with Jody's doctor than with most. Is that a sexist thing? Or so is would, she just really bad at this? Would Would John's dog person get up? be in trouble with Yaz, Yaz's dog person for trying to kill Yaz? Where was Yaz's dog person? Right. Huh? Yeah, it, I don't know. He, he was a little behind, remember? That guy got there early. For some <laughs> and he doesn't care about the other human person, just his own. He doesn't really even care about his own. He doesn't like him anyway. Right. But, <sighs> the opening, the opening is so bad. It is mm -hmm. so bad. It is... Melanie started complaining right away when we were watching it because it does the thing of like, and then this will happen. And then if you do this, you're going to fall into this acid. And then, but if you don't wait to die, then this thing is going to kill you. But I'm not yes. going to stick around and watch. I, and mm -hmm. Melanie's like, why, why does he, why does he leave? I'm like, cause he's a James Bond villain now. That's who this well, or, or he's Freddie from Scooby-Doo. He's got a plan. And if that plan fails, there's another plan. It's a convoluted plan unnecessarily and that's how we'll catch them and the, i'm sorry melanie sighed what do you got no no no. i was just sighing at at the show go ahead and and then we're not just going to be hating on it the whole episode we might be but <laughs> i have to hate on and i i cut it some slack for being a tv show and also like it's not maybe we'll get into it later if we have time maybe not it's not like an HBO show, right? I understand they're not working with the ma massive budgets. But yeah. whoever signed off on all the visual effects for that first opening needs to get fired. That looked... It was laughable. It, I laughed at it. Not in a good way. Like, when they're flying <laughs> around on there, I'm like, okay, I get what they're trying to do. The scenario, though, is so kind of like the weird... The physics of it is so awkward and unrealistic... And over the top that like I don't like it already. Moffat used to do the same thing where they feel like it's the first episode of a season. We have to start in some big bombastic way where uh you know Matt Smith's doctor rides a motorcycle up the side of a building, right? <laughs> right. Which was terrible anyway. But yeah. so this is like that, except look look ten times worse. It looks so bad. Mm -hmm. And I keep alluding to this news story but like there's been comparisons to, and this is kind of from what I understand been an issue with Doctor Who since like the 70s maybe to where people not people but producers and stuff are like we have to try to compete with the big blockbuster science fiction well Doctor Who now has to compete with Disney Plus and the Mandalorian and like cutting edge technology right. but like man they ain't got that kind of money but they're oh, still man. trying Maybe scale it back. Maybe work within your budget. Work, know what works. You don't have to go bombastic because if it looks terrible, we're going to think it's bad. If you keep it modest but do it well, we're not going to think this is worse than Mandalorian. We're going to be like, wow, Doctor Who is pretty good. So I don't know, man. Scale when the, the dog person, uh, like they just kept like going right up to the face and it was like, just because there's a bunch of hair there does not, does not excuse the fact that I'm going to see that this mouth is terribly out of sync here. I noticed that. It was like, and actually. all I could think of was that Tom Baker scene way back when with the rubber mask thing with Mary Tam in the, the Kia Time series, where it's so obviously awful to the point where they decided that okay, it's really just a guy in a mask, and that's the joke. Because the rubber masks would blah, 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 and he's like, well, maybe it was more realistic up close. <laughs> I feel like uh, the last thing on that opening is maybe they ran out of money. Or they, because all the CG in space, a lot of the, space Doctor Who looks good. The oh, last yeah. couple of seasons of Doctor Who have looked, re looked really nice. They've been super well shot. And the space stuff, and when the, the flux is happening... Um, that stuff looks great. It's all right. CG. And I think that's where you get into trouble is like you could all CG is probably easier for cheaper than all CG. And then we're going to composite some people in there. And that's making that work is harder. And that's maybe why the opening fails, but like it didn't look good. There's some questionable shots. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yes, please. Uh, another thing that I, I didn't like, we're talking about things you don't like, right? Um, I, I know maybe it'll explain it more later, but the the uh, bling aliens, how, why did the chick bling aliens like head match like her the the bejeweled head dress ran into her shirt and then down i don't understand how her clothes became part of her body or they share the same you know like skin it, it's weird and they're dumb and why would they do that uh i just noticed i, I do want to talk about that but i just noticed savannah said uh blah 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 by the way we're wrong about john sim i thought he was great I like him. I just think his master is saying, awful. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying he's a bad actor. His ma his master was not great though. Right. That had nothing necessarily to do with him. I think he acted the crap out of it. Yeah. The well, the most recent master. I think he that guy's potentially great. There's a couple moments of him even being the master that I loved. That he had like range, but he's directed or written to be so ridiculous yeah. that I don't like that. And the same is said as a whole of Jodie Whittaker in the show. I like Jodie Whittaker a lot. If you want to see something, ama her do amazing acting, watch Broadchurch also by Chibnall's. That's why I was kind of excited to hear like, oh, okay, Chibnall did Broadchurch. I love Broadchurch. Jodie Whittaker was great in that. But she's so bland in this. Like, it's just not general. She's, her doctor is so there's not enough there, I think. Um, I, or it doesn't play to her strengths. I feel like... I could be wrong, but it seems like she feels, or she looks like she feels bewildered all the time. Like, what's going on? I don't know. I'm just... I'll just do this and, and hope that works. You know she's, what I mean? She's totally written that way. I noticed she said something when she was getting that psychic transmission into her brain. Mm -hmm. Or something... How 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 is it how is this happening? How how are they doing this? And it just occurred to me like that's one of her catchphrases. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing this? How is this happening? How is this happening? Like oh god. They have her say that so much that when she said it, it triggered like, oh, that's one of her traits. Not yeah. knowing what's going on. That's a terrible trait. And then if no. you look at the over the worst offender for me of all. And it ties into the the what do you call them the bling monsters yeah, the or bling monsters or aliens whatever yeah. Here's the big the here we've got another big mystery. Here's the big mystery. It's the doctor's greatest foe that we've never heard of, and that she yeah. conveniently can't remember. Why is every mystery <laughs> just some amazing well, it all revelation happened. from the past that she can't remember? Like, is that her oh, trait? Yeah. Is that she doesn't know what's going on and she can't remember? That is what this doctor's primary traits are. It's and timeless. It it's timeless for children. <laughs> it's amnesia storyline over and over, and that's right. like the laziest way to handle a mystery. Lazy. Yeah. Well, because if, you know, if they let her know what was going on and uh, be a strong and powerful character, then she would be like a hysterical woman that is having period problems or something. So they have to, they have to, you know, like neuter her kind of to, to have her be the star. I feel, I mean, I could be wrong. She's and I'm had... sure a lot of it is just bad writing, but I, you know, I think they, kind of intentionally screwed her over a little bit um to try to appease people i i was talking about this with holly because i was trying to like get my bearings about how i felt about the episode and and holly was basically just like i i want to like it mm -hmm. but i don't know it was a, kind of a mess you know yeah and uh and the thing that we got to talking about was like all of the new who doctors that were around for more than a season and, and mm -hmm. arguably even nine, they all had an evolution that we saw, you know, yeah. like, I mean, maybe, maybe nine's evolution was a little over the head, like hit, hit it over the head where he's like, this is what you've done for me, Rose Tyler. This is what you've taught me kind of thing. And, and, and you were fantastic. And so was I, and, and now we're a new doctor, like, and, um, 10, 
10 starts super like kind of almost flamboyantly uh, excitable and just like the, he's the fun doctor doop 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 but he's kind of he's kind of snarky but then as he goes on he's he he gets sadder and more morose as time goes on and then you've got Matt Smith's doctor who's kind of like awkward and and does his whole thing but he also grows over time he gets an evolution Peter Capaldi had like a reverse evolution he had probably the best evolution of the new Doctor Who's because he's mm -hmm. darn near a robot when he starts can't uh, understand humans at all doesn't like hugs and by the end he's the punk rock doctor with sonic sunglasses and a guitar he's so yeah. great by the end of that uh, right. Like, but he got such an evolution. And I feel like Jody is the same doctor now yeah. as we got in the first or second episode. No, she's a black woman now. Right. Oh, right. Right. No, Ruth is more interesting. <laughs> the Ruth doctor is more interesting than the Jody doctor. And she got one or two episodes. Yeah. Yeah. She had more character development. Of course, part of that character de development was an amnesia plot line, but still, <laughs> what do you want? What? <laughs> Countdown, amnesia, those are the only ways to tell a story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amnesia is the setup, Countdown's the climax. Boom. And, and some yeah. dumb Doctor Who gimmick that we can exploit oh, or create. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I... Oh, sorry, I was just going to say, I think... We're really right, right? Like we're really ragging on this episode. I'm really ragging on it, but I'm with Holly in in that like I want to like it, and I'm still giving it a chance, and I'm still excited for the next episode. This right. hasn't like soured me, um, but but it's not good yet, right. and mm -hmm. I don't think it's gonna be good until Chimnal's gone. Right, like, that's got nothing to do with Jody. Um, yeah, and maybe it doesn't even have that much to do with Chibnall, but I, he's in charge. So yeah, yeah. he wrote this episode, right? Yeah, then it has everything to do with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure he wrote this one. You know, so mm. I don't know what they're going to do with people either. But I didn't like, like the the first character that we're introduced to, and the one we spent the most time with. I can understand maybe giving him some back story stuff because oh, you know yeah. whatever. But I don't understand. And I know there's going to be other parts that are going to we're going to have to get into, but why they like try to set up these other people, take this time to like just separate us from the regular story and interrupt it and then like make it all awkward and weird, not tell us anything and then leave it again. You know, and I know we're going to come back to you later. I get that. But why did I have to spend like five minutes with you being vague and being like, I might meet you in the past. You know, oh, I, I don't know, just oh, don't right. crap like that. Right. right. Well, um, we got like how many different characters in this thing and only he gets exposition. But mm -hmm. then we get this one lady out of time and then we get the girl that he was going to meet up with later. Uh -huh. and, the, and like everybody gets a B plot at the end of the episode. And I honestly had almost forgotten what was even going on by the time that like, I, I don't know if she was meeting him for their for their date or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'm like. Is this the same chick as before? Is she back in time now? Because I thought she was the other person because it's dark and I didn't even see it. And I was like, oh, whoa, no, this is a whole nother thing. Yeah. So here's another B plot that I've got to remember because it's all going to tie together later. I hope. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they should have done like one. They should have done the guy character and maybe the chick that he was supposed to meet up. Have them be in the first episode and then have introduce another character in the next episode um, and then, you know, so on and so forth, rather than trying to jam a little bit of like the like the chick bling alien. I'm, a, that's, I'm assuming that's a sister. I don't really know what any of the, that was oh, yeah. about or why that other guy was there uh, they yeah, were living in Alaska or something. I don't know whatever weird crap was going on there. None of that means anything to me. And. Uh, uh, we oh I'm sorry we had sidetracked your point about her um yeah I'm very confused about that couple and apparently the lady had been his was the one monster's uh sister in disguise that and she didn't know it so I guess she had amnesia um yeah <laughs> it's just a Ruth plot line don't worry it's fine it is, it'll yeah. it'll be better it'll be better than Jody somehow uh, um but Melanie's point earlier is. First off, I was a little off put when like she turns back into it. I'm like, is that your natural look? Like you're you're naturally for 
I did like the one bling monster, like the main guy, the main villain mm-hmm. kind of guy they're setting up. Mm-hmm. He had this weird like, and it I'm guessing changes depending on like who and how many people he absorbs or whatever. But like he had this cool like weird crystally thing growing out of him, and it was this very asymmetrical look. Mm-hmm. Except Chibnall or whoever approves the monster designs has a very specific taste because they're not too far off of the teeth faced monster guy from the yeah yeah, uh, yeah i almost thought it was him for a second i was like mm-hmm. right. this guy is not that cool um, <laughs> but the sister like you know, she she has like glitter glitter makeup job and rhinestones and she looks, she's yeah, like she bejeweled looks, exactly. she looks yeah. like a, a dio a dia de, de los mortos mask or something yeah and then melanie's point is like but why does that design also blend into her clothes that she suddenly has are the clothes part of her body <laughs> yeah yeah is that like uh, how she organically looks man because if your if your body is a pantsuit that's like just the saddest <laughs> thing ever that like, is the on. saddest future ever yeah <laughs> but they've been around for a long time so they maybe they're just not caught up yet <laughs> <laughs> like no no girl baby boomer fashion no uh, uh. Um, what else was there this definitely Weeping Angels. Let's just slap something in there that's... It was cool yeah. and creepy, and it was well done. And it was like, oh, God, this is... Remember back when Weeping Angels were scary on their own, when you only needed mm-hmm. one? You didn't need a whole city of them, and you didn't need the Statue of Liberty to be one? Statue of Liberty. You didn't need all of that? Like, like I was like, I was actually glad to see a Weeping Angel again. It had been long enough, I guess. Um, but I was a little worried about how it would be handled and, and I'm still worried about it. It's like, why, why was, I, I hope that that pays off. I hope we find out why. Watching that scene with Melanie was tense, not so much because of the scene, but because, because of Melanie. Yeah. Sorry. You, Cause she's like, just calm down and focus on getting the key in the door. Stop fumbling about you're freaking out for nothing just look at it and put the key in the door <laughs> she like, yeah she's kept freaking out oh, moving it around and moving it around. Yeah, like, like twice yeah. e- even if you blink like three times your half a freaking millisecond blink is only gonna let it move a tiny bit you dropping the keys enough to turn around and pick them up is gonna get you killed you know, it's it, it just, yeah, people are dumb. As soon as you turn your back to walk, the whole time I'm like, as soon as you turn your back to walk in the door, you're done. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which she didn't do, but she was still done because she yeah. blinked, literally blinked. It was like, well, there we go. I, I, I So, yeah, no, you guys were talking about just like all the different threads and I agree there's too much. And also maybe it was in the, no, I think it was in this. I don't know. Some of the Potato Man stuff I hated. I hated the, some of the dialogue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Strat- it, you hated their faces this time too. Yeah, the, yeah. The the it was different a little, and I did, didn't like it. But well, I'm glad they don't all look like the same clone. You know, like I'm glad it's not just all Dan Starkey, which I love Dan Starkey, but I'm glad it wasn't like the same design for every Santarin. Uh, Strax, when they had Strax, he could be a real hit and miss the way he was written, but I feel like whoever's writing. Um, well, Chimnall or whoever, I feel like the writing of it here was like trying to be that, but not mm. really accomplishing it. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, it's like, oh, I was a little torn about Strax. And if you're trying to write them like Strax and not nailing that, that's not good. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. But again, all the different threads, that's something that for now I can overlook. But it does fall again into the problem of. <sighs> Before it was just having so many characters to where none of the single characters get a breathe. They don't, we don't get timed for character development. And in That's this it. case, it's a combination of so many characters, but also just so much plot. Like, did we need the guy out in space that we don't know yet? Like, mm-hmm. I guess that sets up the flux stuff, but like, yeah, that's a whole other thing that never comes into play here yet. And it's just this thing of like, we're going to bounce it. We want character development. That's like our name. We want broad church. That whole first episode is just Mm -hmm. getting to know the town, just seeing all the people. And then something terrible happens. And now we have to deal with it. And now we wonder what's going on. 
if he had approached the, and I know he he can't just recreate Broadchurch, but like if he had just taken some of what he's already done in the past and applied it to Doctor Who, which is what we've always hoped for from him, uh, then this this could feel like whoa, we're really building to something, and I wonder what's going on here. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? What do you guys think of the new companion guy, Dan? I don't hate him yet. I think he's stupid. <laughs> um, he's a little I dense, mean, yeah. I understand being compassionate. Yeah, be compassionate. Everybody should be, in my opinion. But I, refuse, let's refuse soup when you have literally nothing to eat in your house. <laughs> nothing in your that was a little on the nose, too. Like, man, like, wow. Yeah. Dumb. He's, I feel like he's pretty badly written so far. Uh, yeah. He comes across okay, but, like, he's so one note. He's a good yeah. guy. He's a mm -hmm. good guy. He's he 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 apparently doesn't work except for a, a job that he's not supposed to work at. Mm -hmm. But he just loves this his town or whatever his place. He loves that place mm -hmm. so much. And um, he's a milk magnet. He yes yes he is. Uh, we were talking about that during the show. I was like, yeah, well, you know, he's an older gentleman, but he's a good looking guy. I, yeah, I bet he's. I bet the uh, the moms are all over him all the time. Um. Yeah, he's just too. Then he helps with this. Yeah, he, he kind of a little too. You, you can sell that your character is like a good guy, without making that his one defining trait. Like that's it. He's so selfless to a fault, which I guess is interesting, but I, it feels a little thin here. What about the uh, what about the whole like Liverpool versus Chetfield thing? We're like we're like, how'd you get here from Chetfield? It's like Europe's not that big, is it? Like it was like in a car. I don't know. Like this is. I mean, this is not the weirdest thing you've seen today, dude. The that... the lady from Chetfield. <laughs> oh, right. I would just. I, I don't think they travel as much as we do. Maybe we're like forty five minute drive. That's not a big deal. They're like forty five minutes. Gosh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that's I, I, that's like that stuff. Yeah, that never plays well with me because I'm not from there. Uh, right, I have my own customs from somewhere else. Um, but it's like when I don't know, listening to a podcast from people in LA and they start talking about the freaking turnpike or whatever it is, the 408 or whatever. It's like, okay, yeah. okay, we get it. Local chatter, great. Yeah. You, you know no one cares and you're going to do it anyway and Doctor Who's always kind of been like that like you know no one outside of the BBC cares outside of mm -hmm. the BBC area cares yeah. so it's fine I was I was thinking I'm sorry I'm, gonna, I'm jumping way back but uh, if if an angel was coming at you and you were looking at him could you just not just like wink one eye at a time at him and be okay <laughs> you know to keep him wet and, and just do that or just but baffle him. They're over there like, oh, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> Am I looking? I'm not looking. I, oh, oh peekaboo. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. I think you could. Well, Maybe they've addressed this. I guess it'd be beating on the door, but like, what would have if she got in the house? What then? Like, what happens as soon as you close the door because you can't see them? Right. They would. I wondered that too. Break through a window, and they, they also did a get you now. <laughs> the Statue of Liberty did, didn't she? Or wait, no, they were on a roof, huh? My bad. How, yeah. How is the Statue of Liberty going to walk across the city and nobody's looking at it? <laughs> That's I hate right. That. Yeah, I yeah. hate that so much. Moppet yeah. did some stupid stuff. <laughs> we love the, I love this show. Yeah, love it. The, all the showrunners have their faults for sure. They do mm -hmm. <laughs> this is J and J and T gave us the Seventh Doctor, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I love the Seventh Doctor, but there's some. Well, I'm excited for Russell T Davies to return because he's so good with characters, character development, and character mm -hmm. just characters. Yeah. And Moffat wasn't as good, but at least, you know. He was better were... at weaving a yarn, but worse at characters. And that's where it tended to fall apart. Mm -hmm. 
And then he had a problem with sticking the landing because sometimes his high concept things like the whole. I don't know. I don't even know what season that was, but the waters, the, the Cyberman thing where oh, yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. ever that's ever died is oh, just yeah. stored in a TARDIS. <laughs> he was an idea man. For yeah. Sure. yeah, he's an idea guy. They all have issues with this like grandeur thing like it all for all of time or all of space and every eternity you know no yeah. just give me a freaking simple good story it doesn't have to be all of everything ever you know jesus yeah. <laughs> peter capaldi's doctor is breaking through uh like whatever in a time loop for a million years or something Diamond. like that yeah. <laughs> yeah. yes mm-hmm which yeah. I love, but it's so stupid. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. still so stupid. But, uh, man, that episode. At least it wasn't dog people. Also, the Mind Palace thing. <laughs> he's got his own Mind Palace when oh, he jumps yeah. off the thing. And that's fine, but it's like, it's like, Moffat, we've all, Moffat, we've all seen Sherlock. So it feels right. like you're just ripping yourself off with this. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I actually like the dog i like the i like when the guy wants to pet the dog face because i totally want to pet the dog face oh yeah and that, so that's I'm, probably the best yeah yeah that's probably the best interaction there i just hate the concept behind it i you know mm -hmm. i don't hate the character itself i don't i'll be totally okay hate the, the design but i hate the idea that there's dog people that are assigned to a person because they're man's best friend yeah i don't like i don't like that whole part but it, i do like i don't mind the dog people but I especially like if they if they make cat people, then I'll be totally done. <laughs> They'll be the counter to the cat to the dog people. They're yeah. they've all got a sight a human that they need to kill. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, that'd be great. And they only they do it by like walking in front of their feet as they're going down. The street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they they need to stealthily trip you to your death. Oh, yep. <sighs> What's up, Randy? I was just thinking, well, I'm partially like trying to not like my mind's wandering to other things, but mm -hmm. I'm trying. Uh, let's talk about some good things real quick. So it's not just all <laughs> venomous. Okay. Okay. Um, Cause the, you reminded me there are good things. Uh, okay. the, the petting the dog. There were a couple times. Okay. There were many times I laughed. Half of them. I was supposed to laugh. The other half. <laughs> trick or treat trick or treat intense music credits i was like i laughed so hard and you're not supposed to laugh at that part <laughs> right yeah that was it was so bad but there were i can't remember them but there were things that made me laugh there were some there were some good jokes some good like like line deliveries um, the tardis was cool like yeah i haven't loved the tardis since you know, like I don't, I don't love her redesign, but like the fact that they're just kept like doors in weird places and this leaking this viscous goo from the ceiling. I'm like, mm -hmm. what is going on with the TARDIS? And we hear the cloister bell. Like right. the TARDIS mm -hmm. was on point in this. And she, but she kept banging on it with a hammer and stuff, and I'm like, yeah, that was dumb. Women don't yeah. get along very well, you know. That's that's one of the, the things she does. Yeah, I feel like somebody's really like really somebody else had a hammer. Who had a yeah. I think the doc I think the tent doctor had a hammer at one point, but like so, he yeah. didn't use it as much as they make her use it. It wasn't mm -hmm. like the tele no, like they made the hammer like her telepathic circuits because like the telepathic circuits, once those come up, like those became a go-to. Yeah. Like it's one of those quirks. You gotta have a quirk, right? And right. the hammer became her doctor's TARDIS quirk, and it's kind of sucks. Yeah. Um I liked and I, I liked the idea. Why do they Man, can her and Yaz not have adventures for a while? Like, or can they like not be left alone to have adventures? Do we need Dan right away? And I get that, that Chimnall has this big story and honestly very limited time to tell it. Um, but like it sucks that they're just yeah. shoehorning a bunch of like characters in there because I think right. there's already kind of a weird like relation. They were already hinting at see the character stuff. Man, mm -hmm. I'll I'll eat it up when it's there. Like the weird yeah. relationship dynamic between Yaz and the Doctor, um, the kind of unhealthy, like one sided relationship that's going on there. Yeah, let's explore it. Let's do that. Let's have let's have some like 
a 10th doctor and Donna Noble just off on an adventure uh, that is, you know, sure it's a story, but it's more about like their personal arcs. Let's have some stories like that with Yaz and, and the current doctor. Like let's mm -hmm. have them just do some stuff instead of like, and let's pick up the end of the last bond movie so we can kickstart into this new cluster muck of a story. What I, yeah. I told Holly, like I was talking to Holly about this too, or maybe I already said it here on this stream, but I am eager for Jody to go so that she can do good stuff with Big Finish. Yeah. Because I feel yeah. like oh, they've left yes. this awesome little gap now where it could just be Yaz and the 13th Doctor and we could pick up on all these adventures that that uh, 13's like, I took you on all these adventures because da 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 da. Yeah. You know, like they had that little tiff moment yeah. and it's like, dude, that's a whole, that's a whole bo series of box sets for big finish someday. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. they ever, you know, if they decide to go that route. So I'm, I'm hopeful that maybe she will. She is not good for yes. <laughs> She's not good. For <laughs> she is not. No, because she, she does get that attitude and that's not beyond the doctor to get that. No. See, there's, I guess a little bit of character stuff going on there, but it's just like, it's a little bit kind of too much more of the same little bit that we had before so we're like where's it going but i don't think the doctor is good for anybody really no. it, Martha? I mean, <laughs> takes you and shows you amazing things and Not then nice. and then drops you and you're like oh all the universe and i'm stuck here because uh, i'm just the, the last tuesday's thing now you know it's right. always best you can expect the best case scenario uh the doctor's nice enough to clone themselves for you and leave you in an alternate <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still want that box set. I want to know where the Metacrisis doctor goes crazy, turns into the Valyard, and <laughs> like ruins that universe. That's what I want. Because he's hu he's half human now, so he's totally fallible now. Right. He's gonna die. That changes everything. Weird. I well, just hope they don't make it suck too hard. Yeah, yeah. I'm hopeful. I I just worry because, again, with this like new villain, who there's they go way back, and I'm sure this is going to tie into the last mystery that the current Doctor still doesn't remember anything about, but mm -hmm. like. That makes me more worried that we have another mystery of all this time, this history that the doctor had that does that she doesn't remember. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, last time you revealed anything about that, ev I hated it. I hated it, Chippy. So, like, don't. Yeah. Well, you we, you weren't alone. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's it's weird. Like he's definitely there's a reason opportunity to like just cram his fan fiction in there. Let's just mm -hmm. let's just punch the can in a. Just jack it up a bit with my. I'm gonna put my mark on it before I get yeah. out of here. It's yeah. the comic book thing where, like, when a art, when a author or a writer for a certain set is like ready to be done, like they just drop this like bombshell in the last issue of theirs, and they're like, mm -hmm. "Have Look. fun, yep. have fun explaining that one." Yep. I, I feel like the. The big bad, which I mean, I guess it's I guess it's the, uh, you know, geode face guy, but his power makes me feel like a, a shinier version of the nothing from the never ending story. Um, and I think that they should just go with that because that was great. So they should just rename the doctor um, <laughs> name uh, Ruth, maybe I don't know, rename the doctor uh, and then they can fly off on a dragon and everything can be better and we can start again afresh i wonder what yeah i wonder uh, we have no idea what state it's going to be in state it's going to be in when chimnal leaves so who knows yeah. but i wonder like yeah man i'm i so I, we've hit an hour so we're definitely don't have time to get into the stories and but these i feel like might be worth revisiting on a, uh, next week or something like mm -hmm. these are interesting enough news stories um can i have one more but, thing real quick okay yeah yeah i know they want to be inclusive and that's cool but if you're going to have someone that is missing part of a limb you should give her a hook 
so she can be like a pirate because that's awesome okay that's all i have to say <laughs> go ahead aren't you amazed <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh yeah i don't know i don't really have anything else uh I will say Matt Smith has so far said he hasn't heard anything about Doctor Who's 60th anniversary. That's it. That's the only mm-hmm. news story that's not directly related to like RTD and possible future stuff. Well, I mean, that is directly related, but you know. Oh, man, wouldn't that be cool if they could get these guys back, you know, like Peter Capaldi. I miss him. I, mm-hmm. I even miss Matt Smith. Well, RTD is coming. To, he will come back on for the 60th anniversary thing. So, yeah, I'm hoping for a big, awesome multi doctor stuff. Probably not ninth, but no, probably you know, not nine. Probably not nine, but <laughs> no, he mess that one up. That's the one, <laughs> the one downside to RTD there. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. definitely not a war doctor. So, right, that's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it'd be but cool we- to. I wouldn't mind seeing. I wouldn't mind seeing Jody's doctor with interact with the other doctors. Yeah. That'd be, oh, I mean, I feel good. like she deserves that much. Right. You know, mm-hmm. give, give man before she goes, give her something awesome. <laughs> they should have her fall in love with one of the other doctors. Like they did with Loki <laughs> and uh... <laughs> with the, mi- the Missy Sims flirtation. <laughs> no, they'd have to have it where one of the other doctors falls in love with her. Yeah. Like they did with the Missy Sims thing, yeah, yeah. She's very siloed. I feel like like her character is very almost asexual in that regard, and I'm okay with that, you know. It, but and, also, and, I feel like they could have played into her femininity a little bit instead of playing coy with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a double edged sword, isn't it? Because it's definitely yeah. like it's definitely an intentional, and you can kind of tell from the outfit begin with i mean other than the high waters because mm-hmm. chicks like them some high waters yeah <laughs> and and the the this whole thing the women even though they haven't been great they've been the more masculine of the characters like the you know uh, like the companions mm-hmm. the 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 boys had very sensitive feelings which then again boys kind of <laughs> do a lot of times so i don't know but right. um uh, and the girls you know it's a cop and the doctor you know right. so more aggressive characters and the, and the doctor hasn't had any real like uh you know romantic relationships in this case he's just, jody's not like you know tending tending it up or out there uh, right tenth yeah. doctoring yeah. it up or right. even flirting like 11 would no the only time well they they've had i wanted to i, wanted, I was gonna say npcs they're all npcs it's a tv show uh they've, <laughs> they've had um you know uh, little characters in in like the the like the Frankenstein or whatever the Mary Shelley episode, oh, yeah. like that one guy hit mm-hmm. on her. That's fine. Um, but like in companions, they haven't had that. The most they've had is like Yaz definitely feels some is sure, like yeah. in a relationship. It's more of a Martha doctor. Jones kind of situation though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's about it, which is fine. And like I said, that's interesting because that's like the most really character work we've gotten out of a, either of those characters. So, I think if they had Captain Jack go around with them for a little while, that's what they should have done. They should have just had him come and hang out with them. They would have both come out of their shows a little more and everything. Everyone would have gotten along fabulously. Do you think they'll ever bring him back? I wish. He's like RTD one of my people. will, don't you think? Maybe. I mean, that's it his baby how, right there. It depends how much the stink of the last people's big fuss over I don't, but, his history sticks no. around. But his stuff was not Damn. It was addressed, and once once it was addressed, he's it was done. I think that that you know, when you, if you're doing something, you find out it's a problem, and you quit doing it, then it should be forgiven as long as you know you didn't really hurt anybody. It might be. I mean, I don't. And he's a, he's a funny guy. He was trying to be funny. God damn it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't. I don't know. But it's 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 less about the actual thing and more about how much pressure whoever's running do, do, Doctor Who feels yeah, from I know. the people that do care, right? Is what it when is. probably better. It's probably um, 
more likely that we'll see him again because of that news story where, you know, it's maybe not the BBC's call anymore because right. the BBC has always that had too. that pressure even way back to, you know, the fourth doctor runs where they had to get involved with how violent the show is or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. But they're all aliens and robots, so it's okay, right? It's fun. No, it's for kids. It, aliens look like dogs, though. I kind of understand. Yeah. You can't really, can't really do it. Then it's a puppy face. Well, most mm -hmm. of the time, the aliens just look like people too. So I mean, that's yeah. not necessarily. Yeah, it's, it's better for us because we're like, yeah, kill those people on TV. Don't you kill that fake dog? So like, <laughs> that robot dog, or the robot yeah. dog, or the or the dog person, man. Any Either one, any no dogs. Oh, canine. Oh, yeah, canine. Don't you hurt canine? Don't you? Jam we will John Wick this. <laughs> it's right. That's right. John. He's not Doctor John Smith anymore. He's Doctor John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> Affirmative. Canine was all right. I give that. Right. K9 is a good example of what I was talking about. They've always had those, they've always had the Ewok characters, ridiculous, right. cute characters. They just jam in there because they know it, like kids will latch onto it and people will be like, oh, it's cute. But then they put it in there and they're like, this thing doesn't work and it sucks. How do we even write them out? <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, also, man, chameleon. This is the one thing that has a gun that will murder everything. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. Like, oh, wait. The yeah, doctor that... doesn't use guns. Was chameleon an alien or a robot? Like a oh. little bit of both. I don't yeah. know. Okay. Okay. Sure. Well, you can't kill that thing either. Why did they? What? what is this, like welcomed on board for like an episode and then was gone. Like, why did they even bother? If it didn't work, why weren't they like, you know what? No. What happened? Right. Did they just like, did he just disappear? Yeah, he just kind of, they phased him out right away. Yeah. He's, he's still there in one of the rooms, back. in the back rooms. You know? I love that. And I want them to bring him back now. They, now they, I, well, they keep hinting about him, you know, like they throw mm -hmm. him in uh, as an Easter egg in one of those episodes in the under tower or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, okay. They have used him in Big Finish, but that's because you don't have to have any practical effects to do audio. Right, right. I, I, I love when they do that kind of stuff anyway, like. You know, it, it, say in one doctor's run, they mentioned the pool and then like, you know, 10 years later, someone would be like, let's go down and take a swim, you know, yeah, and you're like, oh, yeah, is. they have a pool, yeah. you know, they need, they need to do more of this stuff like that. I, I think any franchise that runs long enough turns into that. But Doctor Who is all about that, like a throwaway line mm -hmm. will eventually become like an almost weekly reference if they're in the TARDIS, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There was man. I should read more of the comics sometimes. They, it seems like they're kind of hit or miss, but there was a really cool story that I kind of wish they'd take the concept of and use it in a show to where basically some, like the the like dimension, whole interdimensional aspect of the TARDIS was messed up in some spot in there. And they found themselves basically in this like sky world with these civilization and these people living in there. But it was... And they're like, where are we? And they found out, eventually they find out, oh, we're still in the TARDIS. This is it's like, like a bottle TARDIS city of candor type of thing. Yeah, like, it's like kind of gone out a of world within a world area. And it's just expanded. And now there's this world here. Yeah, like mm -hmm. I said, like one of the one of my favorite things about this episode was that that trick of the TARDIS, like creating too many doors. Like every time that they came in, they came in through a new door that was in a new location. And then mm -hmm. that one point where they're almost getting sucked out into space, they're getting sucked out of, out into space from any one of those doors. Right. Like all of those doors, mm -hmm. which arguably exit the same place, but they're all suck <laughs> sucking yeah. you out into space. I was like, that's a cool idea. The TARDIS, there's so much potential, like, awesome, weird science fiction, uh, you know, storylines and weird concepts they could explore around the TARDIS. But I feel like the show, they probably, one, can't go too smart with some of their concepts because they're like, we still have to appeal to children and a mass audience. Mm -hmm. But also, like, budgetary reasons mm -hmm. to where comics and books and audio dramas can explore that stuff because they don't have to worry about any of right. that they can draw it or write it or whatever um but i kind of wish they would explore it more in the show kind of like 
man, that Neil Gaiman episode where the TARDIS is a, a woman for a while. Like that is a yeah. man. That was great. Mm-hmm. And that's the one where they is, is that the same episode where they like go into the other old console rooms that just yeah. happen to still be around. It was like, yep. mm-hmm. yeah, I love those episodes where they explore more of the TARDIS mm-hmm. and you always yeah. find something new and weird. The was cloister what? bells was, was a result of one of those where they're yeah. like, Oh, here we are in the cloisters. I, I, wish, I wish they would have let him actually do what he had written instead of making him chop it up into what it was, which was still okay in my opinion. But yeah, I'm, I think it would have been freaking amazing if he, he, he could have done his initial plan. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. yeah. Um, he had in one of those, con- Jesse, you reminded me, one of those console rooms. I think they come across one where they're like, where the doctor didn't recognize it even. And, oh, yeah. And yeah, I think so. Like, I have future past, like, you guys are obsessed with that. I don't know. It's all the same thing to me. So, like, I love the idea of they come across a, a TARDIS room, a console room that, like, is a future doctor's that. Right. They're like, what's this? Or maybe he just has amnesia. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Maybe it was all just past <laughs> doctors that we didn't see and that the doctor doesn't remember. I don't remember this. Yeah. Thanks for wrapping it back around, Melanie. Mm-hmm. Uh, is, did you figure out if there's anything we should be amazed about? I did. Um, I had something different, but I decided to make it something more acceptable to the everyone. Because there might be kids and general audiences. Yeah, and yeah. This, is, this is great news for kids. Oh, um, uh, in younger generations that have uh been allowed access to an HPV vaccination, uh, cervical can- cervical cancer cases have fallen by almost ninety percent. Isn't that amazing? Ninety. Ninety percent, because almost all cervical cancer and some types of throat and uh, I forget. Uh, there's a couple. Three or four different kinds of cancer that come almost entirely from HPV, um, and cervical cancer is one of them. Uh, but yeah, almost it was like eighty nine percent, I think, is what it is. Uh, not actually ninety, but eighty nine percent of of uh, it has dropped. Cases have dropped eighty nine percent of cervical cancer since they began uh, giving out the right. HPV vaccine to starting like um, at thirteen or whatever. So or at the time they were 13 because that's when that's when it's most effective is if you start doing it at that age and then uh continue, i think you could do two or three shots uh before you're fully vaccinated as an adult mm-hmm. um and they did have people that got the vaccinations when they were already adults and it did drop for them but it wasn't nearly as effective as it was for the ones that started when they were 13 yeah so almost 90 percent. that's crazy great yep. because yeah yeah it, especially like it, when you consider it, at least in Nebraska, I think it was something like 84 or 85% of sexually active uh, people between the ages of like 15 and 30 had HPV. That's crazy, you know, and now that's pr- practically gone. So wow. super exciting news. Uh, and I mean, it's a, it's a long-term study. So right. it's, I think it's the first big long-term study that's come out since they, since they began it. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty incredible. It is. I'm amazed by that. Me too. So at least in my opinion, go and get your kids. If you have them vaccinated, get your kids microchipped. (laughs) (laughs) No, get them vaccinated. Make sure they don't die of unnecessary diseases if at all possible. Right. Yes. Don't be an idiot. Okay. That's it. Um, all right. Hey, Jesse, you got anything exciting coming up or anything you want to say before we go? Mm. Any last no. words? No, I don't. Um, yeah, I don't. Me either. I did have this. I was going to talk about watching B- Doctor Who on the BBC iPlayer and their weird, like, TV tax thing. And I was going to, I had this whole, like, rant about kicking cases of tea into the sea because no taxation without representation and all this it was going to be hilarious but there's always a version of the show that happens in my head before the show and it's never the actual show 
Man, I didn't even think to use a VPN to get maybe a better deal on watching it. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever done it, actually. And it, it was weird. It's weird. Like, it's you have to sign up for a BBC account, mm -hmm. and then you have to give them a postal code. And I was like, oh. I don't even know what their postal codes are like. They're yeah. weird. Um, <laughs> there's letters in there. Uh, and, but the thing that really, the, anyway, the thing that, like, triggered this whole, like, rant in my head was like you have to it's like now you can only watch this if you've paid your television tax or television oh, yeah. or yeah, paid they your television license click the box if you had and uh, yep totally did not that i did that if it's illegal but uh <laughs> so then yeah that was i was gonna have a whole rant about no taxation without representation and the stupid tea party and all that stuff <laughs> but um <laughs> But it 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 worked okay. The problem is, and this is the reason I never use the VPN to do that stuff, is I'm sure I could set it up on my network somehow, but it's on my computer kind of exclusively. And I like to cast things to the TV. Right. And the TV Chromecast doesn't read as, like, under the VPN. So I try to cast something from, like, my new British location to the TV and the TV's uh, in America. And it's like, what's this? We ain't doing this. Yeah. 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 So you have to watch it on the computer. So it, in this that. case I had, I used Chrome's like cast the desktop. Mm -hmm. So it looks a little choppier. The frame rate's not quite as good. Cause instead oh, yeah. of actually just pulling from the straight video feed, like the Chromecast usually does, it's actually streaming my desktop to the TV. Oh, so, yeah. I couldn't tell a difference, but Randy sees stuff that no one, nobody else can see anyway. It's not no one else can see. It's a noticeably different frame rate. Oh, well, I, I couldn't tell. It's like like when there's a faint blue line that you have to have be watching Fargo to see on the TV. It was so noticeable. <sighs> it was I not. I don't understand how people don't see this stuff. <laughs> you, you've got to experience media in the right way. <laughs> All right. Be lucky I don't have my surround sound set up anymore or else it'd take 45 minutes to watch anything. I know it would. <laughs> we always get fired up at the end. You got, you guys. <laughs> I know. Yeah. We're not doing news, or we'll go long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah or we'll go long. Yeah. Uh, All right. Thanks for thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for watching Savannah for half of it. Mm -hmm. That that wasn't snark at Savannah. It was snark at everyone else. <laughs> Come on. Uh, no and yeah thanks for checking us out uh if you want to listen to more or see more uh by the way the video replays audio listeners are in the episode posts i almost always put them in the episode post so if you want to watch too you can hit up the website at grawlixpodcast.com it's g-r-a-w-l-i-x podcast.com that's it patreon all that uh, go to humble bundle go to grawlixpodcast.com slash humble uh, get some stuff. I actually just bought a thing on Humble Bundle, but I don't think it's currently going on anymore. So, Paint Shop Pro and Coral oh. Painter 2021. Yeah, yeah, I've I've eyeballed that bundle a couple times in the past, and um, yeah, I, uh, I'll I be debated. interested to see what you think. I I just want to get away from Photoshop because like I need a new Photoshop. I need I need the new versions, but I don't. I'm not paying. I'm not paying seventy bucks a month. Uh, depending on what you use it for, check out Clip Studio Paint. It does. Uh, it does a lot of things. I haven't needed Photoshop in a long time, but mm -hmm. I use Clip Studio Paint for a little different purpose. But I can do most of most of the things I use Photoshop for in Clip Studio Paint, and it's cheaper and it's a one-time drop for desktop. So, well, if if I'm going to upgrade Adobe stuff, since I'm doing a lot of video editing now, I probably should do the video. But I also use oh. Photoshop like daily. So, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah, man. If you're already paying for it, it's just such a resource hog. I, All the inside I, baseball. You guys yeah. love it. That's why you come. I pay for it. I'm using old, old software. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye.